In today's video, I'm going to be sharing tips that helped me consistently have A's in chemistry when I was offering it. Hi, you welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Wells. I'm a third year medical student of UI. And on this channel, we make videos that help us improve as students. Make sure to be a part of this community by clicking on the subscribe button. Now let's go straight into the video. Here are the 5 tips to study chemistry properly and start having the best of grades. Tip number 1. Change your mindset towards chemistry. I understand not so many students like chemistry. Some believe they can't learn it no matter how hard they try. You have to change your mindset because if you don't change this mindset, the other part of this video will be a complete waste of your time. There is this principle I believe that if we give our art to anything, we can become, if not excellent, we can become fairly good at it. I believe you can do it if you put your heart to it. So the first tip is please change your mindset. Now that you have a positive attitude towards chemistry, let's go to the next tip. Tip number two is learn fundamentals and this is one big reason why people find chemistry so frustrating. Chemistry is building new knowledge based on the old ones. Now if you don't know the fundamentals, it becomes quite difficult for you to learn it. Taking your time to learn the fundamentals of chemistry is not going to be a waste of your time at all. Generally, I'm going to group chemistry into three subgroups. We have inorganic chemistry, organic chemistry and stoichiometry which is the calculative part of chemistry. Now, for each of these subgroup, there are fundamentals you have to know. And if you don't know these fundamentals, it becomes quite difficult for you to learn many topics. It's, for example, in stoichiometry, the calculative aspect of chemistry. If you don't know how to balance equation properly, you are definitely going to have problems solving questions on volumetric or qualitative analysis. Likewise, if you don't understand the concept of oxidation states, you are going to always have difficulties solving problems on electrolysis. You can see how the fundamental you should have learned. If you fail to learn them, it becomes quite difficult to progress. In inorganic chemistry, learning and understanding the periodic table is going to make life super easy for you. If you have the time and can give the sacrifice, I would advise you to go back and learn fundamentals. Back to your old textbooks and try to learn this fundamental or meet someone or find a resource online. You are going to find something that will explain it in the simplest way possible. This is going to be a good investment of your energy and time towards chemistry. Tip number three is to understand using the how and why rule. Chemistry is one of the subjects you don't want to memorize. It is so wide. Like imagine memorizing each of the inorganic compounds and the properties. It is important you understand concept. If you understand concept, I promise you, you'll be able to work things out. You don't have to memorize everything, just understand the underlying concept. So I'm going to be giving you one example. The atomic number of phosphorus is 15. What group and period of the periodic table does it belong to? And state one property of the element. Now this is something I don't need to memorize. This is something I can answer at any point in time. Ask me any element of the periodic table. I can tell you what group and period they belong to because of this simple knowledge I have. To answer this question, there are two simple rules you have to know. First, you have to know how to draw the electron shell and learn how to fill it. And secondly, you should know this rule that the numbers of shell is equivalent to the period the element belongs to. And the electrons in the outermost shell is the group the element belongs to. Now let's draw this. So like let's count the numbers of shell together. First shell, second shell and third shell. It means that this element belongs to period 3. Now let's count the numbers of electrons in the outermost shell. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is 5 electrons in the outermost shell. It means that this element belongs to group 5. Like you see, it's a simple. This, you can answer this kind of question. You don't have to memorize for each element of the periodic table. So learning this basic rule of the periodic table, it, it just makes your life easier. Let's go to the rule how to understand using the why and how. For example, you read from your textbook that in the electrolysis of brine, that is salt water, Chlorine is discharged at the anode and sodium goes to the cathode. Now think about this for a moment. Like you ask a question, why? If you ask why, then you would think about it. Why is this happening? Now let me tell you why this is happening and you are likely not to forget it if you've ever read anything on electrolysis before. Why is because unlike charges attract, like a male and female attract to get the point. So because anode is positively charged and chlorine is negatively charged, that is why chlorine goes to the anode and chlorine is discharged at the anode. Asking the question why? 
will help you go deep it's something called elaboration it's a study technique where you give more details to something like the more details you give to it the more you'll be able to grip it to your brain now let's ask how how is this happening that's another question you could ask that will help you get more knowledge on on it and the more knowledge you have on it the more it sticks tip number four is to practice 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 and practice find old past question papers this is very very important not using past question it's just like shooting yourself in the foot so look for past question and practice them if you've watched any of my video i'm always emphasizing on the importance of practicing past questions Practicing past questions just makes you smart because you know where to focus. It helps you know what you know and what you don't know and what you think you know but you actually don't know. And practicing questions also make you think. If you fail a question once, your chances of failing that question again is reduced by almost half. And if you now understand why you fail the question and why the answer is the answer, your chances of failing the question is reduced to like 10%. Tip number 5 is teach it. There's a popular quote that says, if you can't teach it, you don't know it enough. And that is true. Teaching something just helps you know you know it. And during the process of teaching something, you have to organize it properly in your head. And organizing things in your head is what makes it easy for you to assess later on. I, when I was taking my UTM exam that got me into medical school, I scored 91 in chemistry, which was the highest. And I, I, I attribute it to me teaching chemistry at that time. Find someone to teach it to. If you don't, if you can't find any person to teach it to, teach yourself. I do this a lot when I'm in my room. Please don't do it outside, so people won't think you're insane. I, I talk to myself. I try to teach myself. I talk out loud, or just write what you understand down on paper. Write everything out down on paper as if you are teaching someone, and then go back to check the correction. That's the end of the video. I know you like you can be a guru in chemistry. Yes, yes, you watching me on your phone, sitting in your bed, you are not wearing any footwear, and you are holding your phone. Let me know how many of this I got. All right, I wish you success in your exam, and please make sure you subscribe. Bye.